There are lots of great help desk systems out there like Intercom and Zendesk if you're trying to provide customer support. But what if customer support isn't a major function at your company? Maybe you've got some founders and some admins that are trying to manage support, but you don't have a whole team. You don't wanna pay for suddenly 20 to 100 user licenses for a customer support system. Now, if you found yourself in this position before, like I have multiple times, you've invariably gone down the route of trying to do a shared email inbox. And let's be honest, this is a total mess. You most likely have a system of custom tags that you're trying to apply to your messages and make sure that they get responded to and don't fall through the cracks if someone read it but forgot to respond to it. And this got us thinking, would it be possible to take a system like Airtable that so many of our clients are using for different reasons, for inventory management, for project management, be able to take that and suddenly build a layer on top of it for customer support? And this question came to us from one of our construction clients who was already using Gmail as a shared inbox. Now they've been using our automation system for Airtable, which includes things like CRM and project management. If you wanna learn more about the automation system, you can with the links in the comments below. And we thought, yeah, this is a pretty good opportunity for us to be able to create our own help desk system on top of Airtable. So in this video, we're going to dig into how we can solve that email sharing fiasco that happens in your inbox and instead clarify that, bring that into Airtable for much more streamlined management. So when we start thinking about the email and ticket creation process, this actually starts to get a little bit complex. First of all, we need to be listening to the emails that are created. And Airtable can't do this out of the box with Gmail, so we need to be able to use a third-party system. In this case, we're using Pipedream. And when these emails come in, we wanna sync them to Airtable and create a new ticket. But we're not creating a new ticket every single time because if someone's responding to conversations, you want those responses to be part of that existing ticket. You don't wanna create a new ticket every single time. And as you create that ticket, you're going to want that ticket linked to an account record and a contact record or maybe multiple contact records. So you need to have logic in there to be able to look at the to field and the CC'd and be able to identify who are the people and who are the accounts that this needs to link to. But you also have to think through what happens if this person has never contacted us before. Well, we probably want to create a new contact and a new account and link that ticket to them. How about the attachments in the email? Do we upload those attachments directly to Airtable? Do we put them in document storage? And how do we reply to those messages? We want to make sure that the end user actually gets an email response that's threaded. We're not sending them a brand new email that's unrelated to the email they sent in the first place. So as you can see, there's lots of challenges in building the system, and this is before we even get into topics of routing and SLAs, things that we'll cover in a future video. So I'm a user of your SaaS software, and I'm having some issues logging in. So I'm going to compose an email to this email address, and this is going to be the email address that has the shared inbox attached in Airtable. So I have some kind of issue, by the way, if you ever try to plug in like fake customer support issues into ChatGPT, it's hilarious. It's always like, hello, good sir. I'm experiencing an issue with your platform. Could you kindly help me? I'm like, users don't talk like that. But anyways, besides the point, we're also attaching an image here and we're gonna go ahead and send this to that shared inbox. Now inside of Airtable, we're looking at our tickets. And so if I am the person doing support, I would see the tickets that are assigned to me, or maybe I wanna look at the entire queue. We can set that up how we want because we can simply use filters inside of Airtable. Now at this point, this triggers a workflow in Pipedream that we've configured which does all of that logic that we talked about. It searches for the right records, it sees if it already has a contact and an account. It's going to download our attachments and upload it to Google Drive. And in Google Drive, I assume some people who use this system are going to want to have all of their files offloaded to Google Drive or Dropbox or something else, while other people are going to want those files directly inside of Airtable so that they can create different views and see all of that information visually. Really, it's just user preference. And then back in Airtable, we can see that a new ticket has been created this invalid credentials one. And so I can see the subject, the description that's pulled in all of that initial information from the email into the ticket record itself, as well as down below, we've got the attachment that got pumped into Airtable. Yes, clearly this is a YouTube thumbnail for another video. And then down here, I have my activities. So in this case, this is a ticket that was created, but it also has the email itself. And we can expand this and we can look at the email record and any information about that. It's associated to this contact. Here's the directionality. Was it an inbound or outbound email? And so 
So we've got all that information. Now we could click on this email and we could click to reply there. Or if we're looking at the top level information and we want to manage this ticket, then we could click reply here as well. And that's going to open up a form. Now this was kind of an interesting setup. Airtable has some limitations in terms of what we can do in the UI. So in this case, when I wanted to view some of this message information and create the record and not actually have it hit the database yet, we're using URL parameters to be able to send this information. So here I can see on screen what the previous message was, and then here's where I can add my response. So down here, I've typed in the body of my email and I can use the rich text formatting that I have. We've got our emails pre-populated. We can actually tap in and click on contacts. So if we want to add different contacts to this or we wanna CC people, we can do this either by entering information in the text field, or we can search from existing contacts that we already have in our database. At this point, let's go ahead and send our email response. So now this is going to trigger another pipe dream workflow, which is going to handle all of the threading and stuff that Gmail needs to do behind the scenes. So that means now myself as the user who contacted about this issue that I was having in the first place, now this is going to show up not as a brand new email, but it's going to show up as a threaded conversation with what I already started here. So I've got the message that I sent no longer in my sent, it's now sitting here, and we've got a response that came directly from Airtable. And as you'd expect, I'd be able to keep responding to this back and forth, send that email back to Airtable. And then finally, rather than creating a brand new ticket, it's going to automatically detect that it's part of that same conversation. We have this ticket, we scroll down to those activities here, and we can see all of the different responses. And so our latest response is here. We have that phone information, we could make that call. And if we had to reply again, and we clicked reply this time, it's not showing the initial thread, it's showing the most recent one. So this effectively acts as a help desk with a shared email inbox on top of Airtable. Now I'm so excited to keep building and showing you other features of this automation system that we're building, things like triaging the tickets, using AI for that, being able to have a customer support portal. And so if this is something that you're interested in, either the automation system or you're working on a project right now in Airtable and need some help, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.